Hello folks, my name is Finn Jaley and I'm just going to share with you today one of my acrylic plein air studies, this time a watering can. I'm using my viewing device which I attach to the top of the drawing board using a special clamp. Um, the wooden block fits into the clamp, the holes in it allow the stick to pass through and there's a hole in the perspex sheet as well and there's the stick. The stick has a pad on the end which rests just under your eye or you rest your eye just on it. And you can set the depth of field uh, through the viewing grid using the stick so that you can view more or less of what you want to see of the subject. It's a great time saver, especially when you're trying to race against the light and get something down as quick as you can. So here I am using it, um, just setting it up ready to draw on the perspex with a wipeable marker. It's a bit tricky filming this one whilst trying to draw at the same time but I did it just to give you the idea of how it works. I don't use the device that often but sometimes when you, as I say, when you're racing against time it's a great thing because you don't have to spend too long drawing, it really speeds the process up. The uh, perspex sheet has a grid on it and you can square off that onto your sketchbook or your canvas or whatever you're using. So now I'm taking it to bits and getting ready to transfer the drawing onto the sketchbook. Uh, initially I just used a sheet um, of paper just to show you how you can select a composition as well using this method. Decide where you want to position the image on the paper to get the best effect. So once, you, once you've decided where you want to put it, you can transfer the grid across by just positioning it and marking the a dot where each of the lines will be, as you can see I'm doing there, both on the side and across the top. Then you can transfer the dots at the bottom as well and connect them up using the side of the perspex as a rule, leaving you with a grid onto which you can just square up the drawing. I usually use it for just salient points, just a few things, just to give me basics and then you can clean it off as you can see I'm doing there using a squirter and um, a cloth just cleaning it ready for the next time so I transfer the drawing into my watercolour sketch pad and I'll be working in acrylics um, this is the time lapse of the actual painting taking place now and um, I'm just doing a general blocking. It's fairly one hit wonder really, a la, a la prima and just working steadily until I complete the image, taking care to observe things as I go, uh, especially the light because it was changing quite fast. The afternoon was ticking along and the shadows were getting longer and longer as you probably notice as things develop. The background of the piece is mainly soil and bits of old detritus and leaves and grass. So I'm trying to simplify it all the time so I don't have to confuse the watering can with what's going on behind it. Our garden's quite steep, took quite a bit of landscaping and I've been working on it recently so the watering can came to light. It's an old one that doesn't really work anymore, it leaks actually, but I quite like it as an object and uh, quite like the patina of dirt and rust and, and decay around it so I thought that would make quite a good subject before I tidy up the garden. Sometimes when you feel like painting and yet you don't want to drive out to find a subject. It's good to discover something mundane or everyday like a watering can, uh, a still life subject out of doors can bring you as much pleasure and satisfaction as painting an actual scene in the landscape. Um, it's something different as well. It's nice to experiment with all kinds of subject matter and uh, what's better than things on your own doorstep, objects you're familiar with. As the afternoon wears on, the shadows get longer and longer and creep up the side of the watering can and it's time to make decisions and not get too sidetracked. I paint in the shadow of the watering can on a plank which is moving away to the left and um, 
that gets longer and longer as the sun sinks lower and lower. Um, and then I decide to simplify the side of the watering can and emphasize the light a bit more. Um, it's, it's making those final decisions that pull things together sometimes and helps you to resolve the piece. So working on the right hand side of the light there and just kind of making it a little bit more of a focus really helped to pull things together. So here we go, we're going to take a look at the finished piece uh, in front of the watering can. The light's just about gone now. So we had some brilliant sunlight and now it's fairly dull. And uh, I think I managed to capture it, which is great. There are some possible future subjects. A mixture of three green watering cans. There's plenty of colour in the garden at the moment. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe.